good morning uh, my respected teachers and my colleagues and thanks to organizers for giving me this opportunity to uh, giving a uh, talk of durability and of efficacy and safety of cell parkachinib in patient with red fusion positive non small cell lung cancer uh, i am delivering this uh, libretto 001 phase 1 2 trial and it was presented in 12th european lung cancer conference this year so background of these study was selparcatinib is a first in class highly selective and potent red one inhibitor with a cns activity red fusion an oncogenic drivers it was found in 2% of patient with non small cell lung cancer based on the compelling and durable response in the phase 1 or two study selparcatinib gained this regulatory approval of patients with a metastatic red fusion positive nclc In the initial registration trial data in December 2019, 144 patient and the majority of the patient was enrolled and they are alive and progression free at the time of initial approval of this drug. As a result, the median duration of response and PFS could not be accurately estimated. So, objective of this study to evaluate the selparcatinib efficacy and safety from these Libretto 01 study. 316 patient was included in this trial it, those who are red fusion positive most of them was advanced nsclc few are thyroid and other solid tumors who are red fusion positive so if we look at this study design it was ongoing global multicentric phase 1 2 trial and patient enrolled in the based upon the red fusion positivity among the bngs or fish or pcr key inclusion criteria was the diagnosis of advanced or metastatic disease with a good performance status asymptomatic cns metastasis was also permitted primary endpoint was the overall response rate and the durability of response cns response pfs and os and safety was the secondary endpoints so it's a phase 1 the 20 mg dose was selected to uh, escalation up to 240 mg and the next phase 2 dose expansion cohort 160 mg bd dose was selected all patient with red altered cancers including thyroid and nsclc and other cancers was included and the treatment naive patient was 69% was a treatment naive and 247 patient was previous platinum based chemotherapy was used so a patient with other prior therapy and non measurable disease is also included some patient was included those who are progressed on tki some patient included those who are progressed on immunotherapy also so the measurable disease was the cns disease 26 percent, 26 patient was those are measurable active cns disease is also included if we look the baseline characteristics the uh, platinum based chemotherapy and anti pdl1 therapy is also included who those who are previous platinum based chemotherapy group and uh, tki is also permitted in this cohort and the rate fusion positivity was equally balanced in the uh, uh, two arms so the efficacy the objective response rate if we see this 84% in the treatment naive uh, group versus 61 and median overall response is 20 months versus 28 months and first year duration of response is required remarkable 66% versus 73% so those who are previous platinum based chemotherapy they are good better in terms of one year duration of response median uh, progression free survival was 22 months versus 24 months and the overall survival was 49% versus 169 so the median duration of follow up of this study was 25 months versus 26 months if we see this cns data definitely objective response rate was 84% among them the blessed clinical response was cr is 7 patient partial response is 15 patient stable disease was 4 none of them have progressed on cell parkitini then median duration of response in cns disease was definitely is 9.4 months with the median follow up of 25 months so duration of response uh, i already mentioned the treatment naive group 22 months 20.2 months in treatment naive group and 28.6 months with the platinum based chemotherapy pre treated cohort if we look at the progression free survival 22 months of uh, the pfs of median pfs those who are treatment naive and 24 months and near about 25 months in previously treated patient the cns response again the waterfall curves is shows 26 patient those who are measurable cns disease at bedlines those who are better 22 had 
confirm best response either of CR or partial response with this uh, therapy. Regarding the safety profile, definitely 24 patients had grade 3 treatment related emergent adverse effect including respiratory failure, cardiac arrest, pneumonia, sepsis, cerebral hemorrhage, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome leading to sudden death. No grade 5 toxicity was observed in this cohort and 34 patients who discontinued due to AI. A. These 11 were deemed to be related to the study treatment as per the investigator. If we look this classical adverse effect of this drug, edema, diarrhea, fatigue, dry mouth, hypertension, altered ASTLT, transamnitis, constipation, rash, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, these are classical TKI side effects and the ECG uh, prolongations, thrombocytopenia, etc. So, but these side effects are equally balanced, those who are treatment naive as well as uh, post-platinum. So, with the conclude, the, with the longer follow-up and additional patients, selparkitinib continued to demonstrate robust and durable efficacy in patients with red fusion positive advance and SLC. It demonstrated CNS activity with 85% intracranial overall response rate. Median duration of intracranial response was 9.4 months and intracranial PFS was 19.4 months at the median follow-up of 22 months and selparkitinib's safety profile was consistent with previous reports with no new safety signals still identified and notified. And this Liberato 001 trial is still enrolling patient with red altered solid tumors. So thank you and happy to give any questions from audience.